Hi, my name is Gracie. I'm one of the people who is a part of uh, this presentation. Um, my other partners are Jada Ivey and Heaven McNulty. This is our um, presentation on Cheryl Tatanobek's postpartum depression theory. So the person who developed this theory, or the theorist, is of course Cheryl Tatanobek. And up next to her name, you can see her certifications. She has a doctorate in the nursing, nursing sciences. She also has a master in nursing sciences. She is a certified nursing midwife. She is also has a fellowship to the American Association of Nurses. She's an obstetric nurse and is a distinguished professor at the University of Connecticut's um, School of Nursing. She received the 1970 Jane C. Thompson Nursing Award and the Association of Women's Health Obstetric and Neonatal Nurses Distinguished Professor <laughs> Service Award. She's also earned many other um, awards, titles, and many other things. She's very accomplished um, and very knowledgeable, very intelligent. She has furthered her education throughout all the years that she has worked, which is very impressive. Um, her scholarly focuses, of course, are on postpartum mood and anxiety disorders as a professor. Those are her like specific um, scholarly focuses at the University of Connecticut. She also developed the postpartum depression screening scale. I think it was developed in 2009. And um, this postpartum depression screening scale is basically a way to um, help with early detection of women who are more susceptible with developing postpartum depression after they give birth. And so that has been extremely helpful for doctors with this scale to kind of see who's susceptible or not and kind of make preparations in that distinction. And of course, lastly, for my part at least, is the theory. So the theory that Ms. Dr. Beck has uh, developed, it's split up into two major concepts. So the first concept is postpartum mood disorders, and the second is loss of control. So the first part, which is postpartum mood disorders, this um, includes, of course, postpartum depression, maternity blues, postpartum psychosis, postpartum obsessive compulsive disorder and postpartum onset panic disorder, which those last two, I had no idea was an actual diagnosis. Um, it was really interesting to learn that because I thought there was, you know, only postpartum depression and per postpartum anxiety um, or psychosis. Um, so it was really interesting getting to have my mind open up to that. Um, uh, and then the second major concept is loss of control, which um, she describes in our uh, professional nursing textbook as teetering on the edge. And um, she also describes it as it's a basic psychological problem leading to women trying to cope through a four-stage process. And I've listed those four stages. I'm going to go through them and um, kind of list a description of each, which they're self-explanatory, but sometimes you need more explanation into fully understanding. So the first one is encountering terror in the form of symptoms. So you start to develop these symptoms after you have your baby. Um, these symptoms from postpartum depression, maternity, whatever it is that you have or are developing, you start to feel symptoms of, you know, that mental uh, illness. And then the second one is dying of self. So dying of self is basically where the mother, um, she basically isolates herself from many people who would be willing to help her. It's kind of like a self-sabotage, self-destructive um, like area or time. And so the mother has to deal with that, deal with um, trying to isolate themselves, trying to, um, well, isolate themselves from people who would be willing to help them. Is like I said, a self-destructive coping mechanism or stage process.
And then the third one is struggling to survive. So this is the time when the mother is um, seeking help, trying to deal with these um, issues that are coming up, trying to deal with acknowledging this postpartum depression or um, anxiety, psychosis, whatever you want it to call it, as well as having to take care of the baby that is in their mind causing this. And so um, it's a really um, painful experience for them, especially this part when, you know, their everything, their baby that they just gave birth to um, is kind of the reason for why they're experiencing this and it's really really difficult them for them to go through this because it's very contradictive and it's very confusing and then the last one the fourth um stage is regaining control of their lives um during the um healing process and then it's a guarded recovery so this is the part where um they're basically grieving for, you know, the way that they felt about their baby and the lost time that they had, the time that they lost with their baby, getting to get closer, the emotional intimacy that they could have had with their baby um, during the time that they were dealing with all of this. And also, like, a guarded recovery, making sure that they know that, you know, it's, you know, not their fault. It's just something that happens sometimes and that, you know, they're going to have that baby for the rest of their life and they can, you know, use that time to get closer to them like they wanted to when they were younger but weren't able to because they were having to deal with this terrible, terrible thing. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed um, getting to learn about this. My aunt dealt with postpartum depression and um, postpartum psychosis after she had her youngest and it was really difficult watching her deal with that and that is I think one of the reasons why I have developed such um, an interest in women's health especially in um, obstetrics and this has been a really really amazing time getting to learn about this um, but yeah thanks Hi, so for application, um, postpartum depression is a medical condition that affects many women worldwide. Um, it is something that has been happening since the beginning of time, but recently with more research, we know what it is and we can advocate for patients that experience postpartum depression better. And we can use Cheryl Beck's theory to help and aid many women that experience postpartum depression. And when looking at her theory, I thought one of the most important parts of her concept that relate to the application is identifying the risk factors for postpartum depression. And these risks can include depression, stress, prenatal anxiety, socioeconomic status, and like unwanted pregnancy. Um, and as nurses, obviously we can't prevent all these risks. Like we don't control somebody's socioeconomic status or whether they had an unplanned pregnancy or not, but it is our job to identify them. And we should also aim to create an environment for patients where these risks aren't exacerbated and we can approach them with urgency and support to help them have a smooth birth and pregnancy. So for application of practice, I really wanted to put it in a hypothetical situation to show how we would use Beck's theory in real life. And while this is a hypothetical situation, Things like this have happened in real life. Women have experienced tragedy during pregnancy. Women have experienced many stressors during pregnancy. So I think it's really important to put it into real life to show as nurses what we should do. And I wrote, Sonia, who is 34 weeks pregnant, recently lost her husband in a car accident. Sonia's husband was the sole provider for their family. So we see now that she's experienced tragedy 
which puts her at risk for depression and anxiety. And we see that she's experienced a socioeconomic change because she has lost the sole provider for her family. So now she has to find out ways to, you know, finance her family while also being pregnant. And that can also cause depression, anxiety, and a multitude of stress. So as she's coming in for her routine ultrasound, she expresses feelings of grief and sadness to her nurse. She is also showing an increase in blood pressure. So as Sonia's nurse, we should be able to recognize that Sonia is at risk for depression and anxiety because of the loss of her husband. We should also recognize that because of the risk for depression and anxiety, she is also at risk for postpartum depression. And we should also be able to recognize that Sonia's high blood pressure could be related to the stress that she's feeling from the tragedy of losing her husband and not being able to provide for her family. So now as a nurse, it is our time to intervene. So first we need to work to decrease her blood pressure, you know, possibly put her on medication or just, you know, possibly, you know, talk to her or just like aid, like therapeutic communication. Um, but we should also try to put in prevention that would make her birth as smooth as possible. Um, lastly, it's important to evaluate the interventions put in place to see how Sonia's overall health is during and after pregnancy and evaluate whether or not she had a smooth birth or not and if these interventions helped. And that's all. Hi, my name is Heaven McNaughty, and I will be presenting on how my philosophy of nursing is related to Beck's philosophy of nursing. My philosophy of nursing is that the purpose of nursing is not solely just to treat patients' physical needs. I know that when most people think of any healthcare providers, not just nurses, they think of them treating people's physical needs. And most of the time, this might be the case, but patients have other issues as well. They can have emotional issues, spiritual issues, or just general issues with their mental well-being. And nurses are here to treat that as well, especially when patients will come in for a physical issue and it might affect them mentally. And as a nurse, I believe that we help everybody's needs, whether that's physical or mental. And I believe that that's how my philosophy ties in with Beck's philosophy. Beck's philosophy of nursing revolves around all of the physiological effects of pregnancy on women. And a lot of times the women go through just experience depression, anxiety, or just a wide variety of disorders that they may experience. And I believe that it is our job as nurses to help them go through this or to help them through this whole thing and just to explain to them what's going on, why they feel what they feel, why they're going through what they're going through, and how can we fix it. And that's just how it ties in. And a lot of times, even just physical, even when they're going through these um, physiological effects and when they're experiencing this postpartum depression, it can cause them to have physical issues as well. Like, of course, they're going to be depressed. They might have anxiety or they might constantly be dealing with nausea or headaches and things of that nature. So it's important to take care of people's or take care of people's mental well-being as well as their physical well-being. Hi. It's me again, and I'm just here to conclude our presentation on the postpartum depression theory, which I'm sure you know by now is created by Cheryl Tatino Beck, who is a very distinguished theorist. She has also acquired many degrees and she has received many awards for her work, and she is also a professor at a university. So her postpartum depression theory has two components, and the first component is postpartum mood disorders. This just um, includes a wide variety of disorders that mothers can experience after they've given birth to their child. And the second component of this theory is the loss of control, loss of control which just represents a process that most mothers go through whenever um, they're experiencing postpartum depression. And I believe that this theory as a whole has benefited society greatly because it has increased the social awareness of postpartum depression. And I think this is such a good thing because I remember when postpartum depression wasn't seen as something that was real 
or just most people didn't believe that it was a real thing, that mothers actually were depressed after giving birth. Like, it just didn't make sense to a lot of people. Well, now, here is her postpartum depression theory, just proving that it is real. And this is something that people go through, that multiple women go through all the time after they've given birth. And since the social awareness is there now, many healthcare providers can just go ahead and recognize the different precursors or the causes of postpartum depression. And so, so they can go ahead and intervene and go ahead and start implementing different things to, um, to try to reduce the severity of postpartum depression because it's not something that we can just technically prevent, but we can try our best to improve it and just um, make it not so detrimental to the patient and just help them with throughout the whole process. And of course, that um, postpartum depression just relates to my theory of nursing and that it just revolves around the physiological effects and that nurses don't just take care of people's physical needs, but their physical, their physiological needs as well. I hope that you've enjoyed our presentation. Thank you.